Welcome to a new video about analog electronics. In this example, we will discuss the design of a differentiator circuit using an op-amp. We will see that step by step in our calculations, how we can determine the required component values and also simulate the design circuit. And if necessary, we need to tune it and also measure the final design and also tune there where necessary. So we will see step by step our design in the coming discussion. So let's look at our assignment. Our assignment is to design an objective is the circuit shown next. That means we need to dimension the value of the resistors R1 and R2 and the capacitor here. What we need is the high frequency input impedance of 6 kilo ohms. That means actually the following. If you look from the input and at high frequencies, that means the capacitor is then a short. You need to see a 6 kilo ohm input resistance or impedance in this case. The unity gain frequency, FT, must be 500 Hz. And the cutoff frequency for this circuit must be 10 kHz. Now, the requirements for our design is that we need to design the circuit completely, including our comp component values. We need to compare the results of the calculations, simulations, and the measurements. We need to also prove that the specifications are met and discuss where necessary the, the design uh, tuning and, the of course, the steps we have in our design. And we need to use the exact component values in our final design, also the correct models in the simulator. Now the transfer function, let's start with that one, because the transfer function is required in order to calculate the required component values. It's actually from the output divided by the input, that is actually shown here. So the H of D is the transfer function of this differentiator circuit is minus ZA over ZB. ZA is here the impedance here of the feedback part, and ZB is the part here which you see at the input. Now ZA is actually a pure resistive part which is just R2. So that is in this case pretty straightforward. And ZB is the series combination of the R1 and the reactance of the capacitor C. And the reactance of the capacitor can be written in the Laplace domain as 1 over SC. And if you combine these two together you have this expression. Now we have the necessary information to substitute that in this H of D for the differentiator transfer function. Then you have this. Now we can simplify this by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by SC. We have this expression. Now you see already that you have the required transfer function because it is this is a high pass filter. So you can see the high pass filter transfer function in the standard form. So this is what we have. Now, we can also convert this into the J omega domain that is really required for our next calculations for this uh, circuit and also the given specifications. So you just re replace everywhere where you see an S into a J omega because we work with the steady state analysis here. Okay, we will move on with this transfer function using the J omega notation. Again, our specifications are shown here. Now the condition one or the specifications one is the high frequency input. That is actually like I said in the beginning, looking from this node to ground, that we need to see at high frequencies, that is actually at infinite frequencies, a resistance of six kilo ohms. But if you look at it here from this node to ground, that is actually from this node to this point, which is a virtual ground because due to negative feedback of the op amp, the op amp tries to make this node and that node equal to each other. So this is effectively ground. So when you start here, you end actually here. And at high frequencies, the capacitor reactance is almost zero. So we can consider that as a short. So you see effectively R1. And that is, the R1 should be 6 kilo ohms. So there's already one unknown uh, determined. So we have only C and R2 here left. The second condition is that we need the unity gain frequency. That means the absolute value of this transfer function in J omega must be equal to 1 at that specific frequency omega t. Of course, we have given in ft, which is 500, so we need to then do 2 pi times this 500, will be then 1000 pi. Now, what does this absolute value of this transfer function mean? That is actually the following. You have this expression. The absolute value of the numerator is just omega r2c, of course, evaluated at omega t, then you have this expression. And the denominator is the square root of 1 plus the omega r1 c quantity squared, again evaluated at omega t. That uh, value, the, the magnitude here, 1, must be equal to 1. 
So that means if I rewrite this, it means the square root part here in the denominator must be equal to omega t r 2 times c over 1, which is shown here. And it can be also written in this form such that you have an expression for r2. Okay, now we have our first equation we will use later. Now condition 3 is about the cutoff frequency. Cutoff frequency here is defined as the value of this transfer function, uh, which is then square root of 2 smaller than the high frequency gain because we talk about the high pass filter. Now again we look at the high pass filter uh, circuit here that we have and we need to know the high pass gain because that is this part which is HD at the high frequencies absolute value and again that is in absolute sense R2 over R1 since the capacitor is a short so this is just a simple inverting amplifier and absolute value is just the ratio R2 over R1 that means we need to substitute in here R2 over R1 and this will be again evaluated at omega C as we did here so we evaluate it as shown this is again our transfer function and this is actually the right side of this equation now you can divide by r2 r2 that goes you have this expression and you can also see that we can cross multiply so that's actually this so this square root times one is equal to square root of two times r1 times omega cc that's all shown here and you can then move on by Squaring the left side and the right hand side, you get actually this expression. And uh, evaluate this and simplify this as 1 is equal to omega c r 1 c quantity squared. So we can now say omega c is equal to 1 over that r1 times c. So this is our second example, a second equation. Okay, substitute now this equation number 2 in a form rewritten as omega c, 1 over omega c is equal to r1 times c so r1 times c is 1 over omega c that will be here in this part substituted in equation number one then we get the following so it is actually rewritten here and you see now here that we have omega t omega s omega c i mean and omega t again here in a c so we have an expression where you see the specification and the capacitor c okay let's call this equation number three now for equation number 2, we can calculate, since we know the R1, which is 6000, we can calculate what the C must be, because omega C is also known, which is one, uh, 10 kilo ohms times, times 2 pi, of course, for omega C. So we can rewrite this, and if I now substitute the values, 1 over 6000 times 2 pi times 10 to the power 4, you will have 2.653 nanofarads. Since we know C, we can substitute it in here in equation number 3. Finally, that is actually our final unknown. We can calculate now R2. And we know this omega T and omega C from our specifications. And we just determined the C, so everything is now in place. And that will result in 120.15 kilo ohms. Now the transfer function will be then looking this transfer function by substituting the R2, C and R1 and C also here. You have this one and then simplified form is this expression. Okay. Taking that all together and again a summary of the results we have just found. I will start with the stimulation results using an ideal op-amp because if that doesn't do the job then the actual op-amp and also the model in the simulator will definitely not do the job. So we start with an ideal situation. First the body plot using again, oh, uh, this is the ideal op-amp. These are the values we just determined, R1, C and R2. And we see something, and also this is the transfer function. We see a couple of things here. The high frequency gain here is given as 26.03 dB. How is that determined? Again, R2 over R1 and then 20 log of that ratio that will be then given here. What we also see is that the phase at that high frequency is minus 180 degrees, which is of course consistent because then the circuit will behave as a pure inverting amplifier, so we have a phase of minus 180 degrees so that's all very fine we also see that the cutoff frequency is at 10 kilohertz that's determined by going down from this value dbs by 3.01 so that is also very fine and you gain frequency you see at 0 db or i mean at 500 hertz you reach the 0 db so everything is actually checked now in the ideal op-amp situation okay so that means we start here on the right foot we can move on and then 
exact same procedure using the op-amp model for TL072, just an op-amp in the simulator, what we have done. Okay, you see already the differences compared to what we had before, because in the ideal op-amp, this was actually a flat line, so actually the ideal high-pass characteristics. So you see actually band-pass characteristics. That is due to the effect of the op-amp pole, and we see that this is indeed not what we have expected, and also not what we have discussed and also taken into account. But let's see what we have in this case. Okay. All right, this is again our transfer function. We see the pass band gain has decreased somewhat, not that much. And we see also the cutoff frequency here going from this part is now almost 9.5 kilohertz. So you go down by approximately 500 hertz. So there is an error here in the cutoff frequency. But the unit gain frequency is still very close to 500. So we need to fix this cutoff frequency. It's definitely not what we wanted. So let's move on. And again, you see here the TL072 as the model. By the way, the voltage sources VCC and VE here are 15 volts here and minus 15 volts here. So it's not shown, but that is how it's powered. Okay. Now, we have our original values, and since we didn't achieve the specifications or met the specifications, especially for the cutoff frequency, we need to tune this. So I have then tuned this circuit. You see actually here the new values. That means for this transfer function, and this transfer function actually not, is not valid anymore, but that is just here for completeness. This is the original uh, values, the set of three components. That is now tuned after some trial and error. And this one. So R1 has not changed that much, it's just this one. But R2 has changed uh, approximately by 6.5 kilohertz up. Exactly, actually, in this case. And the capacitor is also going down somewhat. And it's now 2.47. What we have, and the circuit is again shown here. You see the values we have here in this new circuit. Again, the TL072 op amp model in our simulator. The maximum gain is here now shown. It is now at this 41.09 kilohertz. So it is actually the center frequency, and this is the pass band gain. Now, in order to determine now the cutoff frequency, you have actually now two cutoff frequencies, lower and the upper. I first look at this one. This will be now 9.972 kilohertz, which is fairly close to the 10 kilohertz. So you can say this is good enough. We see also that the unit gain frequency here for this case is 502 hertz, and we need the 500 hertz. So again, that is perfectly fine within our errors. So we can say let's do this and try to use these three components, the use tuned components in the simulator in actual circuit. So we can say this is fine, so we can move on. That means we need to look now at the simulation, I mean this measurement results. And we have here the original circuit uh, values, components, and also the tuned values for the R1, R2, and C. Now this is the part for the pass band gain measurement. You see the yellow line is our input and the blue line is our output. At the pass band gain, the phase is exactly minus 180 degrees. In this case, it means uh, we have actually what we can achieve the max. And you see here that the peak peak value of our output, which is the blue one, is 21.46. You see that from the cursors, actually. So it means actually the VO or VI at this center frequency is 21.46 peak peak over 1 volt peak peak, because this is 1 volt peak peak, the yellow one. You can also see that here approximately it is 1.002 volts. That means the gain is at 21.46 as a scalar, and this then the dB is 26.63 dBs, which is again close to what we have calculated and also seen in the simulator. And this happens at 33 kilohertz. But we have seen in the simulator it was approximately at 41 kilohertz, so not or 44 kilohertz, so that is something which is not exactly the same. That wasn't a specification. The specification was really considering the high frequency input of impedance and the input. Yeah, unit gain frequency and also the cutoff frequency. This is not an issue, but uh, it is not as we have seen. So that is something which is in this case not a problem, but can be a problem if that is a specification. Okay, moving on and looking now at the cutoff frequency. Again, now the specifications and also the original and the tuned values, and this is the circuit. You see here what we have measured at 10 kilohertz. You see the 10 kilohertz here. You see that the output is peak peak 50.05 volts 
and our input is again 1 volt, so our gain is then 15.05 volts, straightforward, and dB is 23.55 dB. But we know that our pass band gain was 26.63 dB, so we should actually go down by 3.01 dB, and we need to reach actually this 23.62 dB at 10 kilohertz. So there is also some error here. Now, where do we reach that cutoff frequency then? Now, that is the plot on the right side. Again, the yellow one is our input, one volt peak peak, and we reach the actual cutoff frequency at 10.12 kilohertz. You see here the peak peak value is now 15.17. That is actually achieving a 10. 12 kilohertz. So that means we have an error in the cutoff frequency through the, uh, compared to the specification of 120 hertz, which is not that much. You can say in percentages this is doable, but this is what we have. We can of course tune this to get it better. I, th I found that this is good enough, so I actually found that this cutoff frequency specifications is met in this case. Now looking at the unit gain frequency, again this is the plot. I have here for the case when I look specifically at the 500 Hertz again the input voltage is the yellow one that is just one volt peak peak the output blue one is approximately now let's say 948 millivolts peak peak which is in this case of course not 0 dB so there is some error so that again we need to have 0 dB at 500 Hertz then when do we reach that gain of 1 or 0 dB? That's the right plot. So we see that and that is achieved at 528 Hertz. So we have now, compared to the left side, the, or the specifications actually, we have an error of 28 Hertz. Again, all these plots and also the previous plot about the cutoff frequency and also the pass band gain was uh, with a circuit of TL072, which is our op-amp, and these uh, component values in the circuit. Okay, I think this is also an acceptable error. So, all right, this is our example considering the differentiator design using OPAMP. We have discussed how we can calculate the required component values here in R1, C, and R2, and also what we need to do in the simulator to get closer to the specifications. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.